and will be appearing as the character Jonathan on Fox's new hit show, Empire. For the first time tonight, please welcome to the Arcata stage, Merlin Iman. That would knock Mike Tyson out 10 seconds into the first round. Knock <laughs> him out cold, seriously. And I was a kid, you know, being a black kid in a supermarket. I was like a kid in a fucking amusement park. I was happy as hell running around the grocery store. And I would come in with my mother, and I would see this white kid standing with his mom, and he would be like, Mom, I want that toy, and I'm not fucking moving till I get it. <laughs> my mother would look at me like, You better not try that shit. Trust me. So then I walk around with my mother, you know, I'm trying to be, you know, obedient little kid. So I walk around with my mother, we walk through the supermarket. As soon as she cut through her aisle, she's going forward and I start doing the moonwalk like Michael Jackson. And I go to the candy stop, candy aisle, and I get to a bag. And trust me now, my mother, she had a radar. She had, matter of fact, she had GPS before the shit was even fucking invented. And I would rip a bag of candy open. And before I get that piece of candy in my mouth, her radar would go Child fucking up, aisle three. <laughs> right before I put that candy in my mouth, I get that powerful backhand. Pow! I mean, the shit really made the noise. It made so much noise that other people in the supermarket froze in my face. Now, I'm kind of dazed, so everybody froze in the supermarket. It seemed like they was in a Nike commercial.
look at the race that you were in the You know you can win.
Also, I, I noticed a lot of different things. Like when I'm in the neighborhood, that's where I get my comedy. You know, and I'm not riding anybody in no type of particular way. I'm just saying, <laughs> what's up with this? Hey, man, how you doing, man? How you doing this, man? What are you talking about? <laughs> what? <laughs> Guy came to me talking. I don't know where he was by. You know, his accent kind of threw me off, and he said I was talking fast. I was like, really? I was talking fast? <laughs> Let me tell you, a couple of black women I know came through the woods out here. And they was like, I said, what are you doing out in St. Charles? They said, we're looking for hair. And I know they got a lot of horses out here. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for my sister that's out there. <laughs> no disrespect. <laughs> Trust me, believe me, cookie take hours to get that weed done too. Man. That shit ain't natural. <laughs> she was on Saturday Night Live, honestly. And Saturday Night Live, I enjoy that show. I think the street, I was shook, man. I was like, when the lady walked by me with her bag, she clinched up on her bag, and I'm walking, and I saw this cop pull up on me, and they both looked at me like this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was an alien out this motherfucker. I'm like, <laughs> man, and I'm thinking, you know, you know how we make the news nowadays. I didn't want to end up like that. Uh, yeah. Merlin and from Empire, shot down by police just because he looked at him. Bad eye contact. Over and out. <laughs> they would have been singing at my funeral. Snoop Dogg would have came and said, 187 on a stupid motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all watch the roast of Justin Bieber? Was that a good show? <laughs> Martha Stewart, that's a bad bitch, right? <laughs> that's a bad bitch, huh? I tried that shit too. My girlfriend said, well, what do you, you know, I ran into a little bit of money on the show Empire doing all the stuff I've done. So 
Papa and I, I splurged a little bit on the watch. And my girlfriend, you know, she's white, so she said to me, oh, what do you call that? Um, African-American rich? I was like, no, bitch, nigga rich. <laughs> 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 Fuck it, at least I look good in the life, motherfucker. <laughs> But yeah, you know, the comedy stuff is a really good thing. It's a great stage. You know, I, you know, some of the greatest artists in the world perform on this stage. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the largest bands from history, Purple Rain, is coming out to definitely entertain you tonight. Believe me, Lawrence Day and them, that's a great man. Trust me. Great man. I grew up under the Sugar Hill Gang, though. I'm from New York. because they think she lost her mind and they're acting like they know her. But it was actually my grandparents. You know, so I met my grand aunts, my grandmother, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love my grandmother, rest in peace, I love her to death. You know, and then my grandfather, the thing that was the culture shock for me, it wasn't the fact that my grandmother was white, it was the fact that my grandfather came out and he was like this. <laughs> and I'm standing in the center and I'm like, what the fuck is my grandfather doing? This is my grandfather? Then all of a sudden he put this red mark down the center of my head. I said, Ma, what is that? He said, that's chicken blood. Don't worry about it. <laughs> now, where I'm from in Brooklyn, if you see somebody bleeding, it's best for you to turn around and go the opposite direction. <laughs> Believe me, Brooklyn people are crazy, honey. But I made it through all of that, and I'm here on stage, and I'm, I'm happy to be alive, surviving today, not running into any police officers. <laughs> <laughs> we have to put that to a stop, really. If there's any St. Charles police officers in here, you see me walking down Main Street, hi, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> Wasn't me. Yes, sir. That's what we always say, right? I'm quite sure your husband said that several times. That's why y'all been married 28 years. <laughs> yes. Man, it's a little hot up here. Huh? Oh, yeah, I know that, right? That's very impressive. I like that. See, that's your wife? <laughs> really? Oh, what? You tricking the night? I'm going to go such and such over there at the Hotel Baker. Hotel Baker? Yes. Oh, you know. <laughs> I'm quite sure, you know, honestly, you come to see a band tonight, so I gotta, you know, amp you up a little bit, you know, and everybody, when you used to hear music, it's nothing like trying to hear somebody trying to tell jokes when you want to listen to fucking music, right? Because I know my father tried that shit when my mother would turn on her music. She'd be like, shut the fuck up, I'm listening to Al Green right now. Don't do fuck <laughs> Yes. But I am definitely happy to be on this stage. 
And it's impressive that, you know, some of the artists that I found out that was here before me, and some of them have deceased, and, but they are legends. And they shot a few HBO Showtime specials here, which I'm very impressed with. So hopefully this will add to my resume. <laughs> and hopefully HBO is looking. <laughs> yeah. But also, you know, I grew up under a great legend, Michael Jackson. Yes. I live in that area right now in Indiana. And trust me, I do not get any slack from the white people because I know Michael Jackson. <laughs> trust me, I don't. Because Michael was from Gary. And Gary is not the place you want to tell people you're from. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> like white people are surprising me tonight. <laughs> I'm on stage in a predominantly white audience. I got black people sprinkled around like pepper. Damn, that's like a fucking menu with this motherfucker. <laughs> yes, sir. Damn, this fucking place is hot as hell. Guess they forgot about my fan. That goes to show how much of an artist I am, right? <laughs> I don't even have a fan at this motherfucker. What's going on? <laughs> but yes, ladies and gentlemen. And several times even before comedy, you know, it was, you know, my mother father didn't think like my, my profession was worth making money of. I don't understand why, because anything you deserve, anything you do, you deserve some type of royalty to it. Am I correct? And it takes a lot of balls to stand up here in front of 200 people and talk shit. Just <laughs> that shit is not fucking easy. Believe me, that's why pilots have auto flight when they're in the air. Because I'm quite sure several more planes would have crashed trying to fly around. Really. They only land the motherfucker. They don't do too good at that shit. Trust me. <laughs> I was on Southwest the other day flying in from Albuquerque, New Mexico, because you know how fucked up the weather is in Illinois. Yeah. And I'm coming from Albuquerque, and the weather is 70 degrees. And all he had to do was lightly lay us down on the runway. Man, we bounced around in that motherfucker. I thought we was about to die. I was scared as hell. It was like, oh, it's ice on the runway. Really?